Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Uh, I don't remember who it was. I think it was uh, William Dynan who told me about this. And then I also want to thank uh, Desert Sentinel and Fish Fart for giving me time-stamped copies of these uh, two wonderful, wonderful videos by uh, the legal genius that we like to call Chili, Chili de Castro, Jose Maria de Castro. And he's got a bit of an outbreak going on that his uh, makeup isn't quite able to hide, but, uh, you know, we all have our days. So we're going to we're going to listen to uh, little snippets of these two videos and, and we're going to see how our legal genius is going to fare, because I am going to project to you that his uh, his brilliant machinations are going to come to naught, as it were. Uh, I couldn't make it to the Ironton courthouse today. And so I sent in a continuance letter to see most people send in like a motion or a request to continue. You don't just tell the judge, I won't make it. You send in something. Usually it's a, a, some sort of a notice to both sides saying I can't make it. And I would like a, I would like a continuance and hopefully you've worked it out with the other side and they've agreed to the continuance ahead of time. That's normal. It, what, what actual attorneys like to do is contact opposing counsel and get an agreement to continue it based on a conflict in your calendar. Um, you don't just send a letter to the court, but, go, but do go on, sir. To the judge Waldo, who is a fraud and a criminal, and he's a terrible person. So that's called an ex parte communication. You're not supposed to send a letter to the judge unless you also send it to opposing counsel. So I hope he sent it to opposing counsel because ex parte communications are frowned upon um, and judges aren't supposed to take notice of them, which is probably why the, uh, from my understanding, the hearing went ahead and the judge, instead of issuing a bench warrant, very kindly said, you know, at least you contacted the court, so I'm going to continue this for a week, but you got to be there. You have to be there in person or else a bench warrant will issue. So now let's go back to Chile uh, defaming the judge. Uh, he, he, I believe that he's a criminal. I believe he's involved in these rehabs and these scams. Thank you, Cairo. I believe it. I believe. You know, uh, funnily enough, uh, Chile de Castro was, was he pled... He pled guilty, I think, to theft two in Oregon for stealing a pair of jeans and a jacket back in 90, I'm going to say 94 or 95, somewhere in that range. And uh, he also either pled guilty or was convicted of giving a false ID to a cop. Uh, he gave a he gave a bat. He was pulled over in a car that had a that stolen plates on it. Now, nothing ever happened with the stolen plates, but when he was pulled over in a car with stolen plates, he gave the officer a fake name and address. Now, again, this was mid-90s. I don't remember exactly when. He seemed to have a, a run of bad luck in the mid-90s with the police, it seems. Um, but I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, wonder, I wonder if Chile de Castro has a more colorful criminal record than the judge does leave that now i can't prove that yet but i'm this close to be able to prove that waldo's a fraud i'm this close judge waldo this close waldo if this close what to coming like I, I don't understand this close to what and you're going to be off my case by next week because i'm adding you to a federal civil rights lawsuit you're going to be gone because wow because you're a defendant in a civil rights lawsuit meaning you can't preside over my case so wow that's those are strong words uh, so he's he's going to name the judge in a federal civil rights lawsuit. And so the judge is going to be disqualified. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's let's see if uh, if this continued. This is uh, from, I guess, the, a couple days ago. Waldo, for being a judge, man, you're dumb. You're dumb. I'm adding it to my federal civil rights lawsuit and I'm listing you, Waldo. I'm amending my federal civil rights lawsuit to add Judge Kevin Waldo. You're being listed, Waldo. I'm amending it. I'm amending my federal civil rights lawsuit and I'm adding Judge Kevin Waldo. Then you'll have to recuse yourself, you corrupt tyrant. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Is he going to be disqualified or will he have to recuse himself? Hmm. 
you know what? Let's let's ask the Supreme Court of Ohio. Let's see. Let's see what the Supreme Court of Ohio says about that, because the Supreme Court of Ohio has has the power to recuse or excuse me, to disqualify judges or not. They they have the power. So it's it's entirely up to the Supreme Court of Ohio. And what does the Supreme Court of Ohio say? Well, in this case, the uh, the person who was seeking the disqualification of the judge alleged that he named the judge as a defendant in a separate civil rights lawsuit. Huh, that sounds oddly familiar. It is well settled, however, that a judge will not be disqualified solely because a litigant in a case pending before the judge has filed a lawsuit against that judge. To hold otherwise would invite parties to file lawsuits solely to obtain a judge's disqualification, which would severely hamper the orderly administration of judicial proceedings. And it cites in disqualification of Pocorny. I wonder what that is. Oh, look, it's another Supreme Court of Ohio decision, in which case it says, uh, first, the fact that the petitioner in this case is attempting to name the judge in this case as a defendant in her federal case does not automatically lead to his disqualification in the underlying state court proceeding. It is well established that a judge will not be disqualified solely because a litigant in a case pending before the judge has filed a lawsuit against that judge to hold otherwise would invite parties to file lawsuits solely to obtain a judge's disqualification, which would severely hamper the orderly administration of judicial proceedings. And it cites C in Ray disqualification of Hunter and disqualification of Patrick. What do they say? What are they? Well, Oh my God, it's another Supreme Court of Ohio decision. And what does it say? It says the court has previously held that a judge is not automatically disqualified solely because a litigant in a pending case before the judge has named that judge as a defendant in a separate action. And it cites in rate disqualification of Hunter. Well, let's see what that says. And it says, second, it is alleged that the plaintiff... William J. Walton is also a plaintiff in two civil actions in which Judge Hunter is a defendant, listed as cases, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this fact is contrary to the... Oh, blah, blah, blah. Furthermore, the fact that a judge may be an adverse party in another case will not by itself automatically result in disqualification, particularly where, as here, a party has demonstrated a pattern of filing lawsuit against judges assigned to his case as plaintiff William Walton has done. And then it goes on to cite Smith versus Smith, an Arizona case. If we were to hold as a matter of law that a party can obtain a disqualification of a sitting judge merely by filing suit against him, the orderly administration of judicial proceedings would be severely hampered and thwarted. This is Smith versus Smith, an Arizona case. So it's, it's almost like uh, Chile is not inventing anything new under the sun. It's, it's almost like he's going to do something that is not going to result. I mean, maybe the judge will recuse himself. Maybe the judge is like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this sovereign citizen. And the judge might recuse himself. And if that happens, awesome. But guess what's going to happen? Another judge who does the exact same judgy things is going to come in and sit as a judge in DeCastro's case. And DeCastro's not going to be happy with it because judges do things according to the law, not not according to DeCastro's warped version of the law, but according to the law as written statutes and as interpreted by stare decisis. One other thing that I keep hearing about is that Chile DeCastro likes to get power of attorney because he believes that somehow this is going to allow him to represent clients in court. And I picked Ohio just, just because this is where Ohio is, or this is where he's in Ohio right now. So this is, this is where his shenanigans are currently going on. But this is chapter 1337 of the Ohio Revised Code, Title 13, Power of Attorney. Now, power of attorney comes in two basic flavors. You've got the uh, just general power of attorney, and then you have a durable, durable power of attorney for health care. 
a durable p power of attorney for healthcare is like, who's going to get to make my medical decisions if I'm incapacitated? And your standard power of attorney is to deal with like financial transactions. Like I, I can't manage my money. So I'm going to have a power of attorney given to somebody else who's going to handle my financial decisions and they can sign things as if they were me, yada, yada. Now, you may see in here a couple times attorney in fact and uh, down here authority of attorney in fact to under a durable power of attorney for healthcare. There is a distinction between an attorney in fact, which is basically just an agent for the person who's granting them the power of attorney and an attorney at law. So you'll notice you'll notice that in the unauthorized practice of law, you can't use the term lawyer, attorney at law, counselor at law, law or law office or other equivalent words by any person who's not licensed to practice law in connection, yada, yada, yada. So that's the difference. One is an attorney at law. See, you can't hold yourself out as a person. You can't hold yourself out as an attorney at law, as opposed to being an attorney in fact, which is an entirely different animal. Being a, having a power of attorney does not allow you to practice law. It does not allow you to represent someone in court that is reserved to attorneys at law. So anyway, I'm sure there are more shenanigans by uh, this dumb, dumb. God, this guy's dumb as, oh, you're stupid. I do hear that he, uh, that he is raring to file defamation lawsuits against people. And I'm raring to have him file a defamation lawsuit against me. So Chili, uh, you're ugly. And uh, that thing on your chin looks like uh, herpes to me. That looks like herpes. Now, I'm not a doctor, but that looks like herpes. And your makeup isn't really covering it up well. So I look forward to receiving my lawsuit. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.